Christmas is a marvelous season. Did you know it's one of the highest celebratory times of the year for the Christian? A special day set apart to reflect and celebrate the person and work of Jesus Christ? This is my first Christmas as a Christian, so it's extra special for me. Like most of you, I have big plans for the holiday. I'm on my way to visit my daughter Diane and her children all the way in snowy Colorado. Over the past few years since my wife died, it's been difficult to get the family together. Excuses, long distances, and busyness let the time slip by. But a major health issue recently put things in perspective for me. So here I am flying halfway across the country to surprise Diane for Christmas.
symbolizes something and has a deeper meaning? Because it reminds you of a different part of the Christmas story? Exactly. I didn't pay much attention to it in the past, but it holds a lot of meaning for me now. I've never thought of decorations like that. It makes holidays seem more important. The holidays are very important. Did you know that God created holidays? Really? Absolutely. He ordains, in the Old Testament, he ordained several different holy days for his people to celebrate. Each one had their own observances, traditions, and even decorations to remind them of something God did or that he planned to do in the future. I don't think I'll ever look at that box of Christmas decorations the same way again. I think that's the point. When I see these, they cause me to reflect on God and worship him.
help me bag the beans. There she is. Dad? Oh, here, let me help you with What are you doing here? Surprise! Merry Christmas. Oh, it's a nice surprise, just definitely an unexpected one. Well, I hope I'm not intruding, but I, I wanted us all to be together for Christmas. No, it's fine. It's nice, really. Grandpa's helping me decorate the shop. Dad, why did you call? It was a last second decision, and I didn't want to stress you out with planning and getting ready and everything. I just wish I could have warned you that things are really busy at the shop right now with all the tourists in town. I don't know how much time I'm going to have this week. I completely understand. We can save our celebrating until you're off for Christmas. That's what I mean. I would have told you if you'd have called. I don't know that I'm going to be able to close the shop for Christmas. Things have been difficult this year. You can't even get a rest on Christmas Day? You know what? I'll be perfectly fine either way. I just don't want you to be disappointed. Well, I am. Hey, Mom, what's for dinner? Who is this man? This can't be Gareth. Grandpa Joe! <laughs> Mom didn't tell me you were coming. Mom didn't know. Will you go on the slopes with me? I possibly could. You could give me some pointers like you used to do with Mom. I don't think that's a good idea. But I'm getting really good. He thinks he's going to be in the Olympics like Mom. I am going to be in the Olympics, squirt. Especially if I had a trainer like you, Grandpa Joe. No, Gareth. Grandpa didn't come here to coach skiing. But. He was your coach. That's enough. It's not happening. Hi. That was awkward. Avery. <coughs> Eric, you talk to me in the back. Somebody's in trouble. Hey, Grandpa, did you get us any gifts for Christmas? You cut straight the business, don't you? Technically, <laughs> you missed last year. So you could even get us two. Two? You remind me so much of your grandmother. I did, in fact, come bearing gifts. You have them with you? Now, hold on. You have to wait for Christmas. Okay, fine. I need something for Garrett, too. Definitely stealing. Definitely. I think giving gifts is my favorite Christmas tradition. Is that a Bible one, too? Most people think of the gifts of the Magi in the Christmas story. Do you mean the three wise men? I need that. Exactly. The wise men traveled a great distance following a star to see and worship Jesus. They brought him precious gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And each of those gifts symbolized something about Jesus and what he came to do.
I'm just trying to make myself useful. Besides, if I help you with the workload, maybe you will have time to take off Christmas. And I appreciate it, Dad, but I'm just not in the mood for a big holiday celebration right now. The resort has been overwhelming, and it's just not a good time. We could at least have a Christmas dinner. I don't know. We have to eat! <laughs> Let me handle it all. I'll even do the cooking. Oh, boy. That is a biscuit. What is that supposed to mean? And stop hiding behind the counter. Mom, can we please have a special Christmas dinner? I'll help Grandpa, too. Please? Fine. I'll close the shop and we can have a nice family dinner. But I still don't understand why the meal is such a big deal. Because God loves feasts. What? Grandpa Joe's been explaining to me how God loves holidays. He has. And almost all the holidays, or holy days, that God made for his people are feasts. Didn't Grandpa teach you that when you were my age? No, he didn't. So is that why this is such a big deal this year, because of some new religious involvement you've had? There are a number of reasons it's important to me. So why would God make eating a central part of holiday get-togethers. It symbolizes his provision, blessing, and goodness. Gathering around the table as a family represents a fellowship and belonging we share as a family of God. But the food is only one part. Exactly. Each holiday also is a day of rest, and it includes celebrations, prayers, and worship. All of this reminds us of who God is and helps us feel his presence in our lives. That sounds lovely. In his presence is joy and abundance and fellowship. <laughs> in his presence is rest. Oh, <laughs> 
Mom, Mom. You'll never guess what Connor scored for us. What? Free lift tickets to Eagle Top. Wow, how did he get those? They're from his dad's work. They're for Christmas Eve and for Christmas Day. But Garrett, that's hours away. You would be gone the whole weekend. Yeah, but this is a big deal. And it's not like I miss anything here. I don't know. Oh, come on, Garrett. It's Christmas. We were hoping to spend it in the family. Well, I guess it wouldn't be the first Christmas ruined by skiing. Just think about it, Mom. I have to go, but I need to let him know ASAP. Surely he could go another time. You should remind him that Christmas is a time for family. Really? Dad, I don't remember that being a priority when I was growing up. Oh, Diane, I know that, and it's one of my biggest regrets. I was so focused on helping your career that things got out of perspective. Part of the reason I wanted to come out here was to apologize to you. It's fine, Dad. Don't beat yourself up about it. But I do owe you an apology, and I want to make it right. It's fine. Grandpa, I'm really confused. I looked up the biblical feasts, and they forgot Christmas. <laughs> they have Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Trumpets, Day of Atonement, Tabernacles, but no Christmas. How could they forget Christmas? They didn't forget Christmas. It just hadn't happened yet. When did you become such a Bible scholar? A lot has changed for me since I accepted Jesus as my Savior. But Grandpa, when did everyone start celebrating Christmas? The seven biblical feasts that you mentioned are all laid out in the Old Testament. Some of the feasts commemorated historical events like God bringing the children of Israel out of captivity in Egypt. Others, like the Day of Atonement, had specific spiritual significance for God's children. Still waiting on Christmas. All of these pointed to the coming Messiah. Christmas is when he came. And why is he called Messiah again? Because he is the Anointed One, the Deliverer, the Savior. And he's saving us from? Sin. He died on the cross and took our penalty. Then he rose from the dead and promised that whosoever believes in him shall have eternal life. Wow. That sounds pretty unbelievable. Well, Grandpa believes it. I do. I do. After the death and resurrection of Jesus, Christians began using days like Christmas and Resurrection Day to commemorate his work. Each generation uses each generation uses these days to teach the younger generations the story of the Messiah. And they use the same traditions from the biblical feasts. Food, family, music, and even decorations. Precisely. These holidays are the perfect time to teach the story of Jesus to those around us.
some of the same mistakes with your kids that I made. Mistakes? So my parenting is just a bunch of mistakes? That's not what I meant. Look, I'm glad that you've found peace in this new religious experience that you've had, but I'm not going to live my life to make you happy. I've tried that before, and it was pretty miserable. I can't handle the extra pressure right now. I didn't mean to add pressure. I know, but this was a mistake. my mind. You and Avery can go get Christmas dinner somewhere together, maybe have like a grandfather-granddaughter date, but I'm going to keep the shop open. And I'm going to let Garrett go skiing if that's what he wants to do. And I just hope I didn't disappoint you too much again. You didn't, honey. I'm content just to see you. I have to go finish it. Lord, help me. Give me wisdom. I don't know what words to say. Please help me. Are you talking to God? Oh, yes. You startled me. Uh, I've been making quite a habit of that here lately. Did you and Mom have an argument? Not exactly. More of a misunderstanding. Oh, I'm glad that's all. I saw her crying over the coffee supply. <coughs> I thought the shop was closing. No, no. Nothing like that. We just have things we need to work out. Does it involve skiing? Is that why she doesn't ski anymore? I found pictures of you together at the Olympics, stuffed in a box with the bronze medal, and she would barely talk about it. Unfortunately, I am to blame for that. Your mother had an incredible talent for skiing, and I saw it right away. Skiing in the Olympics had always been my dream, but I just missed the mark but I saw she could go all the way. I want to do the same thing. It's a family tradition. That it is. I became obsessed with her training and I pushed her too hard. One day after a grueling practice session, she fell. And that one terrible injury ended her career. She never told me any of that. It explains a lot. Your mother's had to endure many difficult I know, especially losing dad and grandma so close together. Those were the darkest days of all. Is that why you came this year? To help mom feel better for Christmas? I'm here because God led me. I believe he wants me to share the miracle and joy of Christmas with each of you. I have only recently discovered it myself. But don't you find it hard to celebrate and be happy on the holidays without Grandma? I know Mom does. The holidays flood me with many happy and painful memories. 
But the more I reflect, the more I retrace the goodness of God. What do you mean? Christmas reminded me of what he did in the past. Prophecies fulfilled. Miracles that actually happened. Promises he made and kept. And any despair I may feel is replaced with hope and joy when I remember that the God that did all those great things is the same God leading me today. still terminal, it's looking more like a matter of months and not weeks. I should have never said weeks. That was premature. I know it's still hard, but I wanted him to have at least some good news for the holiday. Hi. Um. Hello? Yes, doctor. I'll let him know. Thank you. And Merry Christmas to your family. You're in our prayers. I would never get used to all of this snow. Mom, Grandpa took me to find a tree, and we got the best smelling one I could find. I'm going to go find the rest of the, the rest of the decorations in the back. Dad, Sorry we were going so long. She had to smell every tree. <laughs> I changed my mind again. I want to have a big Christmas celebration with you. You do? Yes. And I'm sorry that I've been so cold. And so mean. I'll close the shop and we can have a huge family dinner and we 
like it's been the whole weekend together. I'm just so happy to have you here with me. How did you find out? Your doctor called. He thought I knew. He said something about test results that show you have longer than he initially thought. Months instead of weeks. Diane, I'm sorry I didn't tell you, but I just didn't know how. No, I'm sorry. It's funny how in one phone call you realize how important people are, how <laughs> much you take for granted until you're threatened with losing something. In just one phone call I realized how much I love you and how much I still need you. I love you too, honey. And these kids of yours. I can't imagine what you're going through, but now I know why you're here. I know why it's so important for you to celebrate <laughs> Christmas. You just want to have a happy Christmas with your family. But that's not why I'm really here. <clears throat> what do you mean? Don't take this wrong, but I, I want so badly to spend a wonderful, happy Christmas with all of you. I want a chance to make right all the past holidays I got wrong. But I'm here for a different reason. I came to share with you the miracle and joy of Christmas, of accepting Jesus as your Savior. I, my time is short, and this is the most important thing I can share with you. You don't have to be worried about me, Dad. I'll get things squared away with God at some point. I know I have a lot of things to make right. You should be focused on you. You should be doing the things that you've always wanted to do with the time that you have left before... <laughs> before I die? I'm sorry. I didn't mean for that to sound so bleak. It's not bleak to me at all. My future is heaven. It's seeing your mom again and truly being at peace and rest. I have joy because Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And you know I had plenty. I have hope for eternal life because he rose from the dead and conquered death. I'm so glad that you have that hope. You can too. He wants to be your savior too, Diane. He came down to earth from heaven to die for you. He wants to be your savior. Today is a day of salvation. You're a different person, Dad. I see the hope that's in you, and I'm ready to accept him.